Quite a few people have been asking me to make a video covering Gear Raid 2, so here it is. We're going to talk about some viable heroes that you can use, some potential lineups, how to place your heroes, and some little tips and tricks to help get you through the levels. As remember, being it the first time gets you the power of dominance, which gives you a 15% stat bonus, and that will allow you to alter it with a much cleaner run afterwards, which is very important to what we're going to be doing today. So, Gear Raid 2 is the second mission you fight against a golem. There is a lot of heavy tanky damage, there is a lot of AoE damage. Those are the main two themes in this. The gear that can drop from it includes a bunch of different sets, but the main ones of importance in the current version is the Curse, which is one of the best AoE mage sets, Night Terror, which is one of the best DPS sets in general, and the Glacier, which is a very good set for tanky heroes or people like Anvito who really need extra attack from somewhere. If we go to the guide section on Gear Raid 2, we can see that the stages change a little bit in layout. If you see all the way up to stage 5, we have a single portal to protect, and then from stage 6, all the way up through to 9, we have two side-by-side -side portals to protect. From 10 to 12, we then have this layout where there are two portals to protect. There's an island in the middle and there's a few tiles either side. And then from 13 all the way down to 18, we have this layout. And we once again have two tiles here, but we lose a little bit of the ideal placement on the side. And, it, and there's not quite as much space to place heroes close together. So over time it kind of forces you to spread your heroes out a bit more that's kind of how the, the map layout functions so we will start with stage five i will put the name of the stage at the top and i'll put timestamps below so skip to the stages you're stuck on i will try to use heroes that are relevant for the stage but please bear in mind i don't have good parity for the lower level stages most of my characters are built towards stage 18 so you will have to experiment with some of the strategies we'll go over now if we look at the recommended heroes for these stages defenders and healers are the predominantly recommended characters for this raid and we'll go over exactly what that is now so we will start with stage five as that is the first grouping of layouts so this team is definitely overkill for this mission but i wanted to mention the strategy that i've gone for the heroes i've taken so i have three dps heroes really i have two fighters and i have a marksman i have sit nauta for control I have two defenders to hold the lanes and I have three healers. Now I'll use this for most of the raids we'll go through, but we're on stage five for now and there's only one lane to defend. Importantly, I took three healers. One of them is an AOE healer. That is tends to be the most important one. So I need to defend this lane very hard, very ardently. This is the most important lane to defend. Okay, so if we check the monster manual, you can see there are two types of enemies. There is the boss and there are Pharaoh's guards. The Pharaoh guards are pretty simple. They are just tanky and they hit very hard. And the boss will appear later on. And he has the ability to deal massive AoE damage continuously. If you see his second skill, Earthshake deals high consecutive physical damage to all targets three times. And that's that's important to remember. So we will use Patrol for now. And I will make sure to include her within my AoE healer's range. So if I place Midan here, you see that my Midan is now covering these three tiles as well as Patrol. And you can see if I want to place a fighter, I have three tiles in front to place and two of those will be covered by my AoE healer. AoE healers are very important for this mission. Obviously, you're going to need more damage output to deal with this. This channel, you see the boss is now doing his attack. And this is the three times. So this is now the third attack. And there we go. That's the end of his earthquake attack sequence. So normally you would want it to be a bit faster placing things. I'm just trying to explain. So I will place down Lightlock next as he is a slightly more attainable healer. I will place them overlapping. Now, if you're able to do it without overlapping your healers, then go for it. Overlapping healers in guild, in gear raid 2 is quite important as there is a lot of AoE damage. If you need to get more damage out, you can place them on the sidelines, such as here with my Wrath. You see that they're still funneling through the middle. If you can see that the boss is channeling to do this earthquake attack, make sure to place your heroes after it is done. And now I will place another DPS down. A better option for me would have been to place Patrol 1 forward and then place Scorch behind her to get some bonus damage out. But I think we're going to be okay anyway. So that's the general strategy for this. It's not too involving at only stage 5, but as it goes on, this strategy will adapt and evolve a lot more. So in stage 5, you just need to make sure you can kill the Pharaoh's guards in time and you can DPS the boss down. Pretty simple. Now the next group of levels is the block of 6 to 9, so we will skip straight to 9. I will use the exact same team as this, a, a bit, still too powerful, but this is a bit closer. There are now two lanes to defend. They are next to each other, but there are two lanes to defend. Now there is a whole bunch of strategies you can adopt here. So as you can see, your healer can cover quite a lot, and you definitely want to make sure you're using an AoE healer. I would like to do something like this, where I have Midan covering here, and then I could put Lightlock here, and then Midan is covered by Lightlock from behind. And Lightlock is covered because Midan can heal behind her one row as well. So that's quite good to have overlapping healers and they both heal the center lanes. Now, Monster Manual, before this guy arrives. There is now an extra enemy 
the Golem Guard. He is probably the bane. He's probably the reason you are watching this video right now. He rolls like a little git and he crushes people. When he bounces into them, they take massive damage. He is very difficult, does a lot of damage. It doesn't say it in the monster manual, but the main thing to keep in mind is that when he hits someone, he takes a lot of damage. So if I just stick Levania here, you see he hit me and he is now very low on health. I've just restarted quickly. So how I would recommend placing your units, considering that you have 31, 35 costs by the time you're getting to the point where you need to hurry up and place, there will be other of these gold guards coming down the other lane as well, and there will be adds coming around the side pharaoh guards that you need to deal with. So you need to have a very tanky line. You saw when he collided, he did a lot of damage. Another thing is he punches very hard after he hits you. So you have to either heal in time or kill him before he has time to reset and attack you. You can place your defender in front and then place an attacker behind with two attack to try to get some attacks in. But you can see he hit me once or twice there and that can be kind of risky. So let me reset quickly. So instead, another option is you can do this. And then while you still have time, you can place down a healer like Lightlock. And that gives you some space to heal up. However, the damage is really high. If you are on these difficulty missions, you may find that's too much damage. And you may need to experiment with having a DPS to help assist kill the enemy in time. Now, there is a third strategy for this. Rather than placing the tank and the DPS or the tank and the healer, an option that I've done and we'll go over again in future is to place it like this. And then to drop a fighter in front to take the hit. And as you can see, the fighter dies, but the rolled enemy has no health left and dies when it contacts with a second person. This is not the best strategy for many reasons that are obvious. You just killed someone. That's not great, right? You want to keep them alive so that you can use them. And now the second one comes and you're a bit more, in a bit more trouble. But in certain scenarios, you may find it helpful to be able to do that so that you can delay or survive the first wave. It can buy you time. It's definitely a strategy that is worth paying, playing with. So for the sake of my default run, I will put down my defenders side by side. I will have my AOE healer come out first. And I will look to play Scorch so he can attack down the side. However, pretty soon you can see the boss is spawning. And he will channel his ultimate now. Free attacks, remember. So this stacking is quite hard. You may want to place your second healer during this. Although you obviously don't want to be taking bonus damage unnecessarily. And now we'll probably have one come through the left lane. So I will place my second defender down again underneath the healing. Both healers, both healers covering each other. So everyone at the moment is covered in two heals. But I don't have any DPS out. I would recommend playing with your placement order. That is very much down to your individual account. I can't really go over that too much. And... There's a few options here. Now, I always take Sit Now, sir, because she has a lot of utility power. You can slow things down. You can buy yourself some time. So she is very useful for stuff like that. And now you can see that I'm actually kind of out of good places to place heroes. Because my healers are not covering any other tiles. I'm not covering the other side. If you do this and you don't have enough DPS, then you could try with a third healer. But they would be out of the shared healing range. So you'll be better off splitting your healers and hoping that they have enough healing to sustain themselves and others. That is where healers like Medan come in handy because they can heal three people at a time. Another thing that is useful is if you use Vortex, you can shield everyone with his ultimate just as you see this charging up or just when you see the rolling boulder about to land. You can of course place DPS in front but they will take the hit and that's where that strategy can come in handy. If you take a few naked fighters, you can just place them in front if you're in a tricky situation, let them die for the sake of your run and it will wipe out enough health from one of the rolling boulders that it can buy you enough time. There aren't many that come each mission. And now the boss will just continuously do this effect. And now we just wait for the boss to approach. And at this point, it's quite easy to win, I found. I've not really lost at this stage. The issue I always have is with the gold guards before you get to the final bar. The boss by himself is not that bad. He does do a high amount of damage, but he is quite easy to kill. And now we'll move on to 10 to 12. They all share the same map. And then after that, stage 13 to 18 is the different map. So 10 to 12, and then we'll move on to the final bracket. So stage 12. This is a lot closer on my BP. So I will take another fighter that I can use to fodder into the front lines. I will take Ein since he is a watcher and it's better to pick up the it's better to build a team with lords if you can. So I will I will take Ein. He is naked, he has no gear, he is gonna die instantly as soon as a boulder hits him, and that's fine. So in this mission I always stack my healers in the middle. Because that is the most important thing they can be doing is tanking. I will place on the left, and you see the boulder hits and does quite a lot of damage, so I need to get a healer down fast. If Madan goes here, she is covering two extra tiles, she's covering all of the fighters and defenders, and she's covering a tile behind that I can use to place Lightlock if I want to. 
You can see the damage output is coming in really high, so I need a way to not die when this happens. So that doesn't work. So this time I can place, I think it was Lavania. I can place Lavania down. I will place my Medanic down again. And I'll be a bit faster about getting down my second healer. So this is one way to get around it, but this requires your defender does enough damage to actually kill them without getting murdered. So that's not the best way to do it. Instead, you could place down a fighter behind, then your defender, and then that way it buys you a bit of time until you can get your, your healers down. So that will work. Additionally, if you want to go a bit further, you can place down your fighter. And then just as it hits, we'll drop down our defender. The fighter's dead, which is a problem. But we now have a little bit more health to play with. So it's, it's not great. We have lost a fighter there and now on spawn cooldown. But it might buy you the time that you need to get more things out. So they're just little options that you have to play with. A lot of this is just fiddling around to find the right margin of success that gets you the result you want. As you can see, both my healers are overlapping each other's heals and I'm healing both lanes. So now I can get down my other defender on the right side. My Scorch has respawned, so it's not really an issue. I can place him to defend on the left again. And now I can start popping some ultimates to help people out to make sure that things are going okay. And that's all fine. Now my right side is a bit weaker, but that's okay. It's not going too bad at the moment. She's still covered in two heals. And my harpoon can still reach and attack the far side. So it's not too bad. It's just not another fighter defending it. However, this does give me the utility of just being able to chuck irons down as a sacrificial lamb. And if he survives, that's great. I don't know how he survived. I guess the healing is just enough and he just about doesn't die instantly. Yeah, there we go. But as you saw, the Rolling Boulder took a load of health damage from hitting Ayn, and now things are a bit safer for my Lavania. Lavania is great, by the way. Her Spouncing Shield can stun, and it can buy you a bit of time. It's the, kind of the same reason why I would suggest using someone like Sitnauta, because it's just great to be able to freeze enemies in place, slow them down. But it all depends on who you're using your placement order. I can't really give you a cookie placement order. There's so many different ways to do it, and you have to fiddle around. If you have to do it the way I did, where you just keep foddering people in the way to die until eventually you succeed, then that will work for you because you'll get the power of dominance, which I do have on, but that doesn't really affect this because that's just on your stats, right? I, I could have it off and have better stats and it would be the same result. And I'll show you what my current team is like. And this is kind of overkill for this stage, but it will be. I figure you may want to see how my current team functions and how I beat this mission. As you can see, I am very fighter heavy. That is pretty much my bread and butter. I always bulldoze everything with fighters. Fighters are pretty much how I get stuff done in this game. And unfortunately, you can see I really lack a Lord on my second team. So this is roughly what I would use. Though I have a bunch of heroes that I could interchange that are all pretty good. But as you can see, very, very fighter heavy. And I will take Vortex as he's a bit of a stronger healer than Anvita is. Though mine is 5 star, which is not great. Just going back quickly to turn off the power dominance for stage 18. as This one's a bit more important. And now, once again, we'll check the monster manual. And you can see it's the same kind of layout we had before. This time we have Garnet Guards. These guys will throw boulders so they can do range damage while they're moving up through these side lanes. That can be quite annoying. So the first one up is coming on the left side. So I'll place a defender down to tank it. The boss will also come through on the left side. It always comes through on the left side. So place your strongest defender on the left, always. So for me, that is Captain Reeve currently. I have Azhor. He is built pretty well, but I need to spend a bit more time. I use Elowin as my primary healer. I place her sideways like this. This gives me the best coverage to heal both lanes as well as allows me to place another DPS here. I use Arrogance because he can hit both lanes with his attack and he does a lot of damage. So you can see this buys me enough time to make sure I kill the adding time. And now the boss has come out. He'll probably channel his AoE ground pounds. There we go. So I don't really want to place another person down just yet. I can use my ultimate to make sure everyone is getting bounced up with heals from Elowin. But if I place another healer, it's just another person that has to be healed. And Elowin can heal three people, so I don't really want to distract from that. Now I have to place my second defender. I will place down Azhor as I've recently got him. And I will use a Salavik here. And I will take down my very newly gained Karmet. Though I have not tested him here, I just kind of fancied it. Now this is not going to be enough healers. You see I lost someone on the right side. Doesn't really bother me. And you can see Elowin is just about able to hold on there. I should have placed Vortex instead of Karmet. That was a mistake of mine. But ooh, I'm interested to see how this works. 
and you can see arrogance is just absolutely crushing them. So the main way I do this is just through having enough damage output. It does feel like a lot of the content works that way. Once you get to a certain level, you can just bulldoze through raw damage. And the beauty of Elowin is you can just drop this down to help out. Now you saw Karmet died. It doesn't really matter. All that matters is you get to the boss at the end, adopting any strategies you can, using fodder enemies to, to tank the boulders. And at this point, the boss will make it up to the final stage. I then drop another DPS on top of them. And then just pop things and the boss will quickly die. They don't. He doesn't have a lot of defense. He seems to just die very quickly. And Salazar's ultimate just instantly rinses him basically. So there's a whole bunch of different ways of doing it. This is one way I would do it. I'll see what my auto team is like. I haven't done that for a while. So you saw how I did it. I'll turn my power dominance back on. That is with a very powerful team. But you see the rough gist. I, I can do it with one healer just about. It is better to use two healers. I'll do another quick run. I'll speed this one up just to show you a slightly cleaner way of doing it, a slightly better placements. Once again, remembering to turn Power of Dominance back off if I'm going to do it again. So here we go. Strongest defender on the left. Healer down alongside because of there's a passive sandstorm effect that deals damage. I'll put down a DPS next so I can help keep my tank alive. The boss will come out, he will do his three waves of Earthquake, so I won't place my fourth unit down just yet. I'll wait for this to pass. And now I will drop down my Vortex, so I have a second healer. I will place down my Defender. And Salazar can go in front. If he dies, it's not the end of the world. I will use my ultimate now because there's going to be a big wave of damage incoming. And yeah, now you can see the waves are coming. If he ultimates, he can skip and kill the ad before it hurts him. So Salazar is just incredible throughout most content because of his ability to do that. You could also use someone like Salavik because he has an invulnerability window where if he hits a certain threshold, his health locks. And that makes him very good for this content. See, unfortunately, my Vortex died out. He's not good enough without the power of Dominance on to stay alive by himself. But that's okay. As you can see, everyone is doing fine. The damage output from Arrogance is massively helping. And if Salazar's ever in trouble, he can just ult, skip the enemy, kill it before it gets to him, and everything is fine. There are only one ad left, which is the boss, so if I just drop a heal down to help out. Bear in mind, I only need to keep the left lane line. If these guys on the right die, it doesn't matter. In honesty, to help out, you can despawn these guys, because they're only going to be taking healing away from the people on the left. The left lane is the only one that matters when you are down to the boss only. So despawn the people on the right to help make sure that the healing all goes onto that side. And then bear in mind that you can be placing down some DPS to help out on this side. And then you just pop everything, drop whatever you want to drop, and it's pretty easy from this point on. And there we have it. So that's the second way to do it, but you can experiment, find different ways to place it. My teams are very heavily reliant on legendary heroes, so I try not to focus on it too much. For those of you that are interested in my team, Salazar is pretty staple for loads of my runs. This is his stats and his sets. I use the Elite Fighter. I use the Night Terror set on him. His crit rate is overkill. Salavik I use a lot. He's a broken set and he has Elite Fighter as well. Once again, focusing on the same stats as always. Arrogance is carrying me through a lot of content. He is pretty much staple in all of my teams. He's just so flexible. Also Night Terror and Elite Fighter set, 100% crit rate, and then focusing on a mixture of attack and crit damage. As for tanks, Captain Reeve is my primary tank. As you can see, I have not got him 6-star promoted, which is very sloppy and very bad of me, but I hate farming extracts. So you may notice that mine is not the tankiest. His defense is not that high. His HP looks high, but it's really not that high. And the reason for that is he is running a broken set, HP, crit chance, HP. Now the reason he's running crit chance is because I stole the piece of the, the gear piece off of him and I figured I would just leave this on him. So I really should fix that at some point. And also you can see the subs are very offensive focused. I've given him a lot of attack speed. So you can see this piece has attack speed on it and I'm running the elite marksman set for attack speed. So he has 163 bonus attack speed. The reason for this is when his ultimate is up, he stuns people for a second whenever he swings in a big AOE for 20 seconds. And I think that's really good. It's very useful in a lot of content to be able to keep stunning people. So I built a bit of attack speed on him. And his attack interval was down to two and a half seconds because it's normally quite slow. So I kind of just experiment with Captain Reeve. There isn't much content where you take massive damage and you really need to tank it. As you saw, he was taking a lot of damage in, guild, in gear raid 2 just now. But that was with power of dominance off. Once I beat it and I now have power of dominance on, it's pretty safe. And I don't have to worry about hit putting him in the most tanky optimal gear. So I kind of just messed about and gave him some gear to, to give him a tiny bit of damage. 
Azhor is someone I, I got him from the summon event recently. I threw some random gear on him. He's got some defense bonus. He's got all defense bonus. And he's also focused on attack speed. because He's got 238 attack speed. Got the elite marksman set again. This is because when his hammer is in the heated state, he can stun for a second. And also while his ultimate is active, he can give out buffs to his team, which is what I wanted to build around every swing. He can give attack bonuses out. So I wanted to test it out. He's not. I've not actually used him for gear raid 2 before. So that was the first... As you can see, he wasn't really needed anyway because Salazar was doing all the work. As for my healer, Elowin, she was one of the first legendary I pulled. I have built her with a elite healer set and a broken set on the right side. You can see 180% bonus healing, about 140%-ish bonus attack and some health. She's got decent on the left side, but the right side gear is kind of mixed. As you can see, this is a very nice piece, but the rest of it is quite mixed and it's not even 16 I haven't put enough effort into her, but I haven't needed to. So much of the game is focused on how much damage you can do. I think Gear Raid 2 is probably some of the only content where you really need a lot of healing. And the second healer I use is Vortex. He is still 5 star. I really need to get him to 6 star. He's running Elite Healer and he is also running with the Mana Spring set. He has 200% bonus healing effect and he has just over 100% HP bonus. He's running healing effect, healing effect, healing effect, and his subs seem to be focused on healing effect and HP. I would suggest probably focusing more on HP percent on him, but in general he is not really the healer you would want to take for gear raid anyway. Some of the other units I use for this aren't really worth discussing, there's a bunch of them, but now rather than going over my heroes, more importantly we'll talk about heroes that you should generally be using for gear raid too. So, the most important thing for Gear Raid 2 is, of course, the heroes who you're actually going to use for this. If you are quite early game, and even quite far up to stage 12, Rex is surprisingly good. If you are lacking epic defenders, or good defenders in general, or even just a second defender, Rex works. He actually lasts quite far, and I had a lot of success with him. I think he was in my first team that beat Gear Raid 13. For other defenders, some of the good people to use, obviously the legendaries are all great. If you have regulars, he is going to be a beast. He will survive forever, so will King Haas down here. He is very tanky and has shield, so he's great. Torador is of course going to be very powerful and will help boost some of your other nightmare DPS, although you don't want to have too many fighters on this. Captain Reeve, if you got him during the limited summon event, is very good and he is my staple tank. I like him a lot as a defender because he has the ability to do AoE magic damage and some CC, which is very nice. Azhor from the recent event you can use. I haven't really had a chance to test Azhor properly yet. I'll make a video on him in the future. I think he has potential to be quite decent, mainly because defenders are quite easy to make very tanky. And he has the ability to buff your other allies with shields and with attack buffs, which is very useful as they're going to the guys who get stuff done, the defender just stands in the way. So, so long as you can make Azhor tanky enough to take the hits from the rolling boulders, then I think he could be very good as a defender for this. Baron is considered one of the best defenders in the game. He also has an Immortal Wrath passive, which gives him an unyielding state, which makes him stay alive for four seconds. This is fantastic. So he is a very good defender to use. Zibilats is not ideal for this as he cannot be healed by allies. Levania, if you are struggling for better defenders, you can fuse Levania. Levania was my first epic defender. I fused her and then I pulled another Rex and I used the two of them together and that was how my first teams progressed. Levania actually took me all the way to gear raid 2 17 with just Levania. I only beat 18 with Captain Reeve. So Levania can go a very long way. Olag as well is quite good. He has massive physical damage reduction and he has the ability to gain a shield to defend with. There is of course Patrol, she scales on defense which is great. She has the ability to heal as well, so a very useful person to use as your defender. Faisela is okay, she has the ability to increase her defense, I don't know a lot about her so I'll withhold. Heliger is an epic lord for the north faction, she gains defense based on enemies blocked. And she also has the ability to grant shields to people, which is of course very useful in this content. Engobun does AoE damage around him, and he also has an armor that increases his max HP, will make it easier to tank those rolling boulders, so he is good as well. Pretty much all of the epic defenders are viable for this, and some of the rares as well, such as Rex. You just need two of these, really, and you can even make do with one if you have a very tanky fighter such as Salavik. But really, as long as you've got these guys and you have a good healer, you'll be pretty okay. So onto the healers then. Elowin is of course probably the best healer to take for this content. She is the only legendary healer in the game. She has the ability to drop these wood elves around so you can get more healing in two locations. Her ultimate is a huge zone of healing as well and she passively gives rage to people. She also has three people she can heal at a time with her basic attack heal. So probably the best AoE healer in the game currently. You can use someone like Vortex. He is a single target healer. However, 
his moisture ult does grant a big shield to everyone a big shield and a big heal you do want to awaken him though as it does give him some bonuses to his shielding light lock can be good for the double burst of healing but this is really not ideal for him there's a lot of passive aoe damage that comes out from earthquake and sandstorm the two effects from the boss and you really want aoe healers for that and in that vein mid is good because she has aoe heals solar stole is good because she is another person who heals one target but then when her ultimate is activated she can heal two targets at a time and Winaga is a very good healer she can have bouncing heals and she can also immediately heal everyone when her ultimate is activated but I would say primarily the best healers are Elowin and Midan just because they're AoE healers most other healers here can work I think Anvita can probably work if you have a very late game Anvita but you, you do want stronger healing really her pulses are just too weak and you do need to tank you can't just kill your way straight through this because the boss will do massive damage regularly so definitely focus on the aoe healers out of these at least take one and then you can use the second as backup i know some people who take three healers so whatever works if you're early on you can use camille of course because she is an aoe healer yeah i, I say that about covers it for the healers now if you're going to be placing fighters bearing in mind in the later stages there isn't a lot of room so fighters that can hit two tiles are very good here zilla 2 is great for this Salavik is amazing because he also has the ultimate torrent which locks his HP for 4 seconds when it goes below a threshold meaning he can't take any more damage so he can survive really well. You can use him to soak the rolling boulder for instance because he won't die in the first hit and he also has 2 attack range when his ultimate is up so he is really ideal for this mission. Salazar is incredible because he has the ability to use his ult to just completely negate the damage from the boulder and kill it before it hits anyone. Arrogance is amazing because he has enough range to hit two lanes at the same time. It's quite cramped trying to place units on the side so having someone who can function kind of like a ranged DPS but while in the lane is quite nice. It's also quite easy to get him within the healing range so I think Arrogance is one of the most useful heroes for, for this raid. Araka as well will be similarly useful and Cerberus could be interesting. I haven't got him but I think it'd be quite interesting but in general Two tile fighters such as Scorch would be very valuable here and I don't think you would really want to focus too much on other fighters in general, they'll just get crushed but you can use them, most people have Borrow up from the early game stuff, just throw him in there and get hit in the face if you need to get that little bit extra of damage reduced because you can't place all your heroes at the same time, take one or two extra fighters that you can just chuck down in front of the boulder as a sacrificial lamb, it, it can help you quite a lot. In terms of marksman DPS, really you can just place whatever you can get away with, you want to make sure they're tanky enough Shark King is actually quite useful because his ult has a big nuke. So you can throw it out across the lane at the right timing to wipe out boulders as they're coming. And that can really help you get by because you want to deal as much damage as you can to stop them getting to you. You can also slow them down with people like Aswan or you can use the Mage Sitnauta. In general, people like Lisa work if, if you don't have much other DPS, but she doesn't have the burst potential that someone like Shark King does. And Shark King's ult comes off very regularly. So I had a lot of success with Shark King when I was building my initial teams out. As for the mages, this isn't really much of a mage level. You definitely can get utility out of them. I think maybe if you had someone like Venoma for the curse to stop enemies from attacking, it could be quite powerful, especially on the boulders after they hit someone. But I haven't had a chance to experiment with stuff like that. The AoE mages, this isn't really their territory. But there's obviously going to be some uses that these guys will be useful for. Sitting out to the control is very useful. If you have someone who has high burst potential, then it can be quite good to get rid of the enemies. But mages are quite squishy, and the AoE damage that keeps coming out will kill them quite easily. So this isn't really a great raid to use mages. So in general, I think that kind of covers the heroes I would recommend using. If you ever have doubt, one of the best things you can do is go to the gear raid. Go here, go to the guide. And then you can check out the lineup that clears stage and you can see what some of your friends and what other people have done and it can just be very interesting to see how people have used again you can see Baron is great, Salavik is great we have Wanaga, we have Maidan, that's the two AoE healers there well, bouncing healing from Wanaga sometimes Vortex is also good, you have the very good two defenders here it's just a good idea to check to see what other people are using obviously everyone works with what they've got so it's just very interesting to see what's used but in general for the recommended heroes it's a lot of tanky fighters a lot of tanky defenders and a bunch of aoe healers so i think that about wraps it up i don't think there's too much to go over again some the general tips are mainly just play with your positions try to overlap heals where you can despawn heroes on the right side after you've killed the adds you want to reduce the amount of healing burden on your healers if they're no longer needed to block that lane get rid of them so your aoe healers can focus on the other remaining people and you can throw fighters in the way to reduce the health of the boulders if the boulder hits the fighter like a an unleveled ungeared borrower or rex or whoever 
then it will kill them, sure, but the boulder will take a bunch of health damage and it will buy you a bit of time. And you can take two extra units that you can't place, so definitely take advantage of that. And just make sure you clear the mission with three stars. After you've cleared it with three stars, you can tidy things up and make a much safer run. But in general, I think that's how I would suggest doing it. Focus on your defenders, focus especially on AoE healers. If you have good AoE healers and if you had a good defender, the rest will fall in place quite easily. So I think that's pretty much all to go over for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments, queries, if you have any suggestions or feedback, then please let me know below. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.